Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. So here's what Orleans looks like kind of set up. You're going to have your board over here, your main board with goods everywhere and you're gonna have your own little board here. And this is what you'll be playing off. It might look really busy, but I'm gonna explain of how it goes. Here's how a round will go. You'll reveal the next hourglass. This will tell you what the event will be for the round. You'll get one coin for having the most farmers or lose one for having the least. You'll draw followers from your bag. You'll assign them out. You'll carry out the actions. Then you'll resolve the event that you found out about number one and you'll pass the star player token. Let me kind of show you how this goes. Step one, you'll take these hourglass tiles and you'll flip them over and you'll do what's on it. On the first one, you always start with this white one, and it tells you you cannot go to the monastery this time. Uh, they will do different things. This one, you get coins for each star that you've passed. This one is your plague, you'll draw somebody from the bag. If it's your starter one, you keep it. If it's not, you're losing, and he dies. This one, trading day, you get a coin for each building you have out. Uh, oh, a repeat. No monks this time. This is a harvest. You have to pay one of the foods or lose five coins. And you can see that it's more income, more trading days, more harvest. So if you've played the game before, you kind of know what's going to come out. You're just not going to know what order they'll come out. So you, you'll flip one of these over so you'll know at the end of the round what's going to happen for that round. You can sort of prepare for it. So this white track right here will signify... Uh, who will get income at the beginning. If you're ahead of somebody, you will get one coin. If you're behind everyone else, you will lose a coin. If there's ever a tie for first or last place, then nobody gets anything. So you kind of want to be a little bit further than everybody, and you definitely don't want to be left behind. And that will occur after you know what the event is. For step three, you'll have one of these bags, and you'll draw a number of workers out of it. I do want to preface it by saying I do have the deluxe edition which comes with these tokens with stickers on it for all of the characters. As you can tell, mine are bagged up because I have upgraded mine to the meeple source. So I have all meeples in mine. So that'll be one slight difference that's gonna be in my copy that probably won't be in your copy unless you upgrade using meeple source. So you will move up on this red track. As you move up on that red track, the night track, you will be able to draw more from your bag. When you start the game out, you will be able to draw four from your bag. And at the start of the game, you will only have four. So you will draw your four you have out, and you will lay them on your market. Now, from round to round, you don't have to use everybody. If you didn't want to fill one up, you could just leave it there, and he would stay for the next round. Or you can leave him down in the market. But when you redraw, if you ever fill this up and have left over, you have to put those in the bag. So... Unless somebody was already out, the most you could ever place in a round is eight. If you look at your player board, you'll see these guys match up a certain levels. So I could go here and fill it up, and I could take a blue, brown, or black action. If I wanted to put the blue and the brown here, I could take the white action. If I wanted to put this guy here, here, and here, I could take a red action. So phase three is just put your guys out wherever you want. Once again, I can leave, if I have a guy left over, I can leave him here and hope I draw a blue next time. But leaving the market giving me some flexibility. Now, if I know I'm gonna be drawing more than I can handle in the market, I may wanna go put him on the board and take a risk. Otherwise, it's probably best to leave him in the market. In phase four, what you'll do is you'll take turns starting with the first player and you will activate one spot on your board. So if I had a whole bunch, let's say I had the whole bunch here, I had my board like this, I would give this up, I would take a red from the center, put this in my bag, so before I only had three meeples, now I have four, and I can move up on the red track. So my guy that would start right here would move up here, and now I can draw five each round as opposed to just the four that I could do the next time. And then these, would get dumped in my bag to be drawn from next round. Then after everybody else went around, I could activate another spot on my board. This time I'm gonna activate the white. I would add a white to my bag. 
I would throw these guys in. And then I can move my tracker up. That would give me a wine, gives me a good on the white. And I would have that extra white guy in my bag. After everybody's taken all their actions, you will carry out whatever the tile was that you resolved in the first phase of the game. I know that I have to give up a good or five coins. Then you will turn start player to the next player and you would do it all again. I'm going to quickly go over this. It isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully it will after I show you the next part. This moves you up on the white track. This will move you up on the blue, brown, or black, also giving you one of those guys. This will move you up on the development track, giving you a gray. This gives you a monk, who's yellow, who's a wild card. And this will move you up on the red and gives you a red. This is how you're going to move on the board. There's going to be a little board over here you move on. This moves you over water. You need a white, blue, and a red. Move you over land, white, black, or red, or and. And this will put you a building out. I'll explain how that works, but it requires a white, brown, and red. You can also move up on the development track. One book for a red and a gray. And a town hall is where people go to, I always say, to die. And you'll get victory points. And I'll show you how that works right now. When people go to the town hall, you can stick any color there you want. You will then utilize this board. And what this board is going to allow you to do is to retire your workers and kind of clear things out of your bag. Let me give you an example. If I was to put a gray worker here, I would get two coins. If I was to put a yellow worker or black or whatever here, I would get two coins. If I was to put one up here on this one, I would get one coin. If you ever fill up and you're the last one to put somebody on the spot, then you get to take the citizen token. And I'll explain what the citizen tokens do later. So you kind of want to time it where you'll be the last one to put one out here. And towards the end of the game, this will fill up and people will be utilizing this more. So let me show you how these tracks work. So when you take a white worker, you will add them to your bag and you will be moving up this track. Move on the first two, you get a grain, then cheese, then wine, and then the fabrics that'll be more and more valuable. On the second track is the browns. You will get these technology. And these technologies that you'll get can be very, very powerful. When you get a technology, you can actually place it somewhere on your board. There are some restrictions. You can't have more than one in a spot. But now I never have to fill that blue up. So I, I can have a white or a brown, but I never have to fill that blue because it's technology. Or I could have placed it here, where I could have had, I have to fill a white and a blue, but I never have to have a brown. And that could have been anywhere on my player board. That's just one example. Moving up the black track will give you access to buildings. This one gives you access to level ones, and you can pick a level one or two. A few of these level one, I'm just gonna show you a few of these level one buildings. The level two just get a little bit more powerful. You get a brewery where you can put a, a monk here and you get two coins, put two white guys, you get a cheese factory. A uh, blue can be wild for any of this. So you just do little things that break the rules for you. And you can buy these and put them up front and they give you extra ways to spin your workers. And like I said, these are level one, there's level twos that are a little bit more powerful. And moving up to blue will give you not only blue workers, but give you money each time you move up. Two, three, four, five. Then you can get to the end, you'll get a citizen. I'll explain what those do in just a moment. I've explained what the knights do as you move up. You can also get a citizen if you get that far, but you'll be able to draw more from the bag. Now the development at the bottom will move you up on this track at the bottom. So if I moved up here, then I would move four books. One, two, three, four. And the books can be very important. Some of these spots will give you coins, but more importantly, some of these are multipliers. And I'll explain what those do when we get to the scoring section, but just understand that those are multipliers. Now this last part of the board is where you're gonna be moving around, building buildings, and getting goods. So if you remember from your player map, at the top here, you can move on water, land, or build guild halls. So what you'll be doing, if you can move across water, you move across water, and you can pick up a good. If you move across land, it works the same way. And if you want to build a guild hall out, you can put one of these. Only one person can build a guild hall in each spot. Now, why is it important to build a guild hall? Let's talk about how scoring works in the game. So here's how scoring works. For each of the items they can get, they're worth a victory point. So a fabric is worth five and a cheese is worth two. A coin is worth one. But where the majority of your points are gonna come from is this section right here. For every guild hall you build on the board, plus each one of the citizens you were able to get, you'll add those together. So 
for the guild halls and the citizens you add together and you will multiply them by the multiplier that you have. So how far are you on the development track? So if you built three of these and you had two citizens, that's five, and you were to get to the third multiplier, then you scored 15 victory points. Whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game wins. Now to go over it really quickly, what you're gonna be doing as a flow of the game, you're gonna be picking up these different workers that you will then draw from the bag to place on your player board to do the actions. Each of your actions you're doing is hoping, hopefully, bringing you closer to scoring the victory points, getting goods, building buildings, or getting those citizen tokens. But for a while, you need to build your engine up by getting these goods over here. And the more of these goods and, and workers that you're able to get, the more powerful you're going to be at later in the game. But at some point, you're going to want some of your workers to go away. And then that's when you will utilize this board. And you can utilize this at any point by using the town hall section on your player board. But you want to clean your deck out, so to speak, as the game progresses. Orleans is one of the best games ever designed. This game hits a 10 to me. It is a home run, and Tasty Minstrel Games just knocked it right out of the park. You've got the deluxe version that looks fantastic. I've even upgraded some of those fantastic components with Meeple Source, and I could not be happier with this game. You have got worker placement. You get these workers that you're getting, and you're getting more and more, and even some better workers like the wild cards, and you're utilizing your board for efficiency to make the best places you can do. You've got deck building through this idea of this bag where you put your workers in and you're drawing out a certain number every turn and you never really know what you're going to get. It's a little bit of luck into it, just like deck building, but it's through a bag. Fantastic. This is one of the few games that I've seen utilize this. I don't understand why more people haven't copied it. It is really, really fun. You've got area control on this little bit of map where you're putting your guild halls down. You want to get a bunch of those out because there's a multiplier to those video, to those uh, victory points. You've got goods that you're collecting that are worth victory points. You move around the board. There's a couple of ways to get those. And each time you move up those tracks, you're getting a little bit more powerful at that action. And you've got buildings that you're building to put out. You've got technologies that you can get to make your board more efficient there are so many different strategies you can do but wait for it they're easy to understand they're easy to utilize i mean you can teach this game to a lot of people you don't have yes this is a big game yes this is not a gateway game but my gosh learning what to do on a turn you're drawing some things from a bag. You might be drawing four or five. There's only so many places you can go. So what looks like all of these options, which they are, have now become limited by what you pull. It's just like deck building, right? What you draw. I, oh, I've got uh, four currency and three fighting and legendary. Okay, this is what I can do. All these options that seem infinite have now been reduced into something manageable. That's wonderful. And if you play your first game where you're not actually trying to win the game or, or game the game, if you will, you're just trying to experience what's going on here, my gosh, is it good. And this game is a near-perfect game to me. If you were saying, hey, I need to know whether the most perfect games that there are, Orleans, Orleans may be it. This may be the one that hits so many different things. And look, if you like your ticket to rides and that's the level that you're at and you just want something that's very easy, perhaps this isn't it. But let me tell you this, this could be the gateway to heavy euros. This could be because th those choices they give you are so simple on any given turn, but they add up to something worth so much more. And that's what you're getting here. Look. It's a beautiful production. This is the game from Tasty Minstrel Games. I believe this is the game they should be known for. This game should be an evergreen. This game should always be in print. It is that good. If you have not played this game, seek it out. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. And you need to be playing it. I cannot say enough good about this game. It is well worth upgrading to the deluxe. It's well worth pimping this version out. This game is fantastic. You have so many good decisions, and they're so powerful, and they're incremental, just what you want to be. You don't want them to be this big swing that just happens all of a sudden. You want your little decisions to add up to something good, and it's wonderful. Now, the theme has kind of been there, done that. You know, you've, you've collected goods, you've got some area control, you've got these workers that are monks and, and knights. But look, it works here. There is a differentiation between each worker that you're playing. They do something a little bit different. They have a different value to you. You know, Do you go out and get that wild card, that guy that can be anything on the board, but 
you're not really progressing down a track. You're just getting something. And that might be fine early on. That might just be what you drew and that's what you got to do. But is it helping you long term? Is that flexibility going to be enough to offset what you're doing? Fantastic. You have all the little buildings that come with it. And you can try a completely different strategy. You can play the same strategy in this game. Get different buildings and you're going down a different path. Just that little tweak right there. And that's what this game gives you. Look, I'm not going to say enough good about this game. This is one that should be in your collection. It should stay in your collection. And it should go nowhere. This is an absolute keeper. The game doesn't play too long, an hour and a half maybe, but you never feel like you're down. Everything you're doing is simultaneous with the other players. You know, you're taking turns later on, but really, unless you're getting close to running out of things, other than the map where you're moving around, a lot of that can be just done simultaneously. Now, sometimes you'll run out of things and you need to be careful when the order matters, and sometimes it doesn't. So. But a lot of this game is happening simultaneously and you're just fulfilling your actions one at a time. And you take one action, one action, one action, one action, and it goes by really quick. So the downtime is too minimal, especially with such a heavy game like this. Guys, I cannot sing the praise of this song more. I don't understand why more people don't talk about it. I don't understand why you don't see this in more shelves in the stores. I don't understand why Tasty Menstrual Games isn't pushing this game. Maybe they are, and it just doesn't come you know, through my wires or whatever. But this is a 10 game. I cannot say enough about it. This is a 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. You have to buy this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.